Hello everyone and welcome to Allergy Smart TV. I'm your host Aaron Dwyer. It has been a very long time since I've recorded an episode of Allergy Smart TV and I must admit I'm quite embarrassed about it. This is meant to be a weekly TV show and I've only just managed to get in front of the camera now after about uh, a month and a half or could even be two months. But anyway, no excuses. Let's get back on track. Uh, what have I been up to? Well, I've been very, very busy. We've had a sick family. That's all past us now. We're all good again. Uh, but on top of that, I've been very busy with work. So I'm also introducing a new uh, layout and theme to the show. What we'll have now is we'll have just a brief introduction of uh, what I've been up to, what's been going on, and then we'll head into a featured segment of the show, followed by perhaps a question and answer session. And then if we've got time, and I always want to be able to do this, is a quick tip. I'll give you, a, I'll give you an allergy quick tip, a food allergy quick tip, because that's what we know, and that'll be towards the end of the show. What we'll be talking about today is I saw... I don't know if you can see this, I hope you can. Uh, headline, Diners Dicing with Death. Beautiful photo there of a, a boy looking uh, very solemn with his uh, medical alert bracelet on and, a, and an EpiPen sitting in front of him. And this was actually uh, quite a good article, um, aside from the fact that there's a whole bunch of uh, peanuts and legumes down here that uh, sort of um, biases people towards... Uh, uh, you know, peanut anaphylaxis rather than any other, but um, this is basically a really good article write up on uh, what do you do or what do people like us do when we go out and have to deal with food allergies in the dining environment of restaurants and takeaway. Uh, fantastic. Honestly, as far as we're concerned, um, we don't take the risk. We are, uh, in our household anyway, anaphylactic to dairy, eggs and nuts. And so for us, the, the risk with dairy uh, is just too great. So we don't actually go to restaurants. <laughs> it's as simple as that. We take the, uh, the completely risk-free approach of not actually going out to restaurants. Um, however, I'll put the caveat in here, is that we do frequent only a handful of places from a takeaway point of view and that is McDonald's, Hungry Jack's, KFC and that's pretty much it. That's our, that's our sort of our three options because they actually have uh, fries that are safe, they don't have um, dairy. In Australia anyway, I do know that in America and other, and other countries that McDonald's fries do actually contain different ingredients. I do know that uh, in Australia we're quite uh, clear. McDonald's have an excellent um, and Hungry Jack's and KFC they have uh, good websites with the necessary information on it for you to be able to find out what ingredients are actually in their uh, fries. However, here's a tip that I wasn't going to give you straight away but um, Hungry Jack's, whenever we go to Hungry Jack's we ask for um, the, the fries are always cooked in their own fryer. Uh, however, for breakfast with hash browns, hash browns are actually cooked in with what they cook the onion rings and the and the other bits and pieces, not in the fry cooker. So if you really want to be sure that you're not going to have little contaminants stuck onto your hash browns in the morning, um, what you need to do is you need to ask Hungry Jacks to cook the hash browns in the chip fryer instead of in the other fryer. However, at McDonald's they actually have separate fryers and they already cook the hash browns in the chip fryer anyway. And so, uh, getting back on track, unfortunately we don't have a lot of information to give in regarding to actually going out and eating at a restaurant and requesting certain bits and pieces to be done for us because we feel that it is just too risky with the dairy ingredients to be able to say, I want you to make sure that you've got clean benches, clean chopping surfaces, clean chopping utensils, uh, check all the ingredients. It is a lot to take on board considering that dairy is sometimes not listed as dairy in some of the ingredients and by the time that the ingredients get to the chefs or the food preparers, chances are that the, uh, the um, 
containers that the food have come in, if they've come in, and if they're if they're not fresh and they've been frozen and they're coming in that way, that the uh, food containers are already well and truly gone with the ingredient with the ingredient labels on them. So that's something to keep in mind. But I'd like to put a question out to my viewers, and I'd like to say, look, if you have some sort of experience with dining out, please comment on the blog, comment underneath here, leave a reply, and let others know of your experience with dining out or food outside. Food outside is a completely different story. We're purely talking about in response to this article that I found here, which was, where was this article? It was in the Courier Mail on May the 14th, this article. I've been hanging on to it this long to talk about it. Okay, so that's our featured article for featured comments for this week. Here's this week's announcements. A little bit late, Anaphylaxis Australia are putting on Feast 08. They actually had one of these last year and it all sold out. Uh, it's, it, unfortunately, this is on this Friday night. Uh, sorry, sorry, this Saturday night, uh, the 9th of August at 7pm. It's at the Tattersall's Club, uh, 181 Elizabeth Street in Sydney. So if you're in Sydney, I know it's short notice, uh, I would try and get along to this event. It is, uh, tickets are $200 each. Um, I believe uh, Amanda Keller is going to be there. Uh, Alex Herbert, Soprano, Jane Sheldon, members of the Australian Brandenburg Orchestra uh, to support children with severe food allergies. So obviously you'll get wine, you'll get dined, you'll have entertainment and uh, it'll probably be a great night for all. I won't be attending, it's down in Sydney. I've already been around uh, the country. I'm actually going down to Canberra next week uh, for business, so uh, my leash is relatively short with regards to um, attending different events around the country. So uh, anyway, Feast 08, if you're available and you don't know about it already, Contact uh, point is, uh, I would just go straight to uh, Anaphylaxis Australia, which is allergyfacts, allergyfacts.org.au. I'll, I'll link that up in our show notes for today. Second announcement for today is, uh, is our book, our children's book, uh, Jesse's uh, favourite things, even with food allergies. Where is it? Well, we actually have it there in boxes here. And unfortunately, I have yet to put a buy link now, uh, buy it now link on the uh, on the website, and also send them off to the different support groups around the world. Uh, so Melanie's collating a list of support groups, and we'll be sending it off to the support groups so that they'll have, they'll be able to stock the book, and you'll also be able to purchase uh, off our website soon. Not yet. We have had requests for it, and the companion boys book that uh, is currently being printed, but uh, as yet. Uh, they're not available. Um, but anyway, we're getting that little bit closer. That's it for the announcements this week. Now for today's quick tip, I want to show you this. The little item here that, uh, that we made up when uh, our son was starting in, uh, in kindy. And this simply get, went on to his uh, lunch bag, his lunch box bag that he had and it's my food is a dairy free nut free zone uh, please don't unpack my bag uh, and it's just uh, laminated both sides yellow colorful and this was primarily because at the kindies as most do is that uh, you settle on your lunch uh, some lunches get all unpacked and put into a, uh, uh, a main sort of a basket or separated and put into the fridge uh, of course, we don't want uh, our lunch to be mixed up with anyone else's lunches, so we had to take a precaution and put this on because at uh, most kindies is that there's usually volunteers that come and help. It's just other parents that come and help, and they might not necessarily know what's going on. So we don't want uh, anybody to start messing around with uh, with our lunch, with our lunches and our morning teas. So, uh, you know. This is all about just trying to be cautious and reducing risk. That's a quick tip for today. Right, hope you got something out of this week's episode. I'm just trying to keep it really short, simple and sweet and be able to get these episodes out to you once a week again. Alright, until next time, bye for now. Have a great week. Cheers.